Hello there, and welcome to Pets Aplenty. Today on the channel, you'll learn about the Bedlington Terrier, a breed that's loyal to its owners, loving to children, and friendly with strangers. We've gathered all this information to help you make an informed decision if you find yourself drawn to this beautiful dog. Before we continue, though, we would love for you to become a member of the channel by clicking on the Join button down below. You can also review the perks of Pets Aplenty membership after clicking the Join button. Now, let's get into the video. Dog Breed History there isn't much about the history of the Bedlington Terrier, so no one knows where and when the breed first appeared, although research shows that he was only ever bred in northern England. Although Rothbury Terriers were their original name, the name Bedlington finally caught hold. Lord Rothbury, whose seat was in the town of Bedlington in the English county of Northumberland, was a fan. At that time, some of the area squires bought dogs from him because of his success in clearing the land of rats, badgers, and other pests. Bedlington Terriers were a hit with people of all socioeconomic backgrounds. Workers in factories and mines adored them because they were effective at rodent control and could be raced in their spare time against one another and whippets. On the other hand, Joseph Ainsley of Bedlington, England, had a dog named Ainsley's Piper who, in 1825, became the first cane to be officially recognized as a Bedlington Terrier. Piper faced his first badger at eight months, and even when he was elderly, toothless, and virtually blind, he was still teaching other dogs how it was done. As with the Dandy Dinmont, Carey Blue Terrier Soft, and Coated Wheaton, he has certain physical traits with these breeds suggesting they may all have a common ancestor. Some have hypothesized that adding the Whippet to the breed elevated its already impressive speed and agility. In the middle of the 1800s, Bedlingtons began competing with other breeds in dog shows. In 1877, the National Bedlington Terrier Club was established in England. In 1886, Ananias became the first Bedlington Terrier to be registered with the American Kennel Club. The breed is presently ranked 128th of the 155 breeds and varieties recognized by the AKC. Appearance the Bedlington Terrier has a combination of soft, rough, but not wiry hairs that form its curly coat. The thickening of the coat on the muzzle and the front legs hides the skeletal structure beneath. Blue, sandy, liver, tan, tan and blue, and sandy and tan are the available coat colors for this breed. Now, more than ever, blue is the color of choice. The dog's height at the withers is 15 and a half inches for females and 16 and a half inches for males, and its weight is 17 to 23 pounds. Bedlington's skull is shorter than the jaw, while the jaw is longer than the skull. The thin nose is shaped like the arch of the Roman eagle. Its tufted pear-shaped head, curly hair, arched back, slender build, and elegant, springy movement are all telltale signs of this animal's unique breed. One of their main features is a tall, narrow head that sits proudly atop a strong, supple body, a deep chest, and a short tail. The upper part of the triangular ears, which lie flat on the cheeks, are rounded and cutesy, earning the nickname Cotton Puffs. His front legs are straight and have the hair-like paws of a rabbit. Temperament the Bedlington makes for a great friend and watchdog because of its high level of alertness, energy, and intelligence. Although they are known to be protective of their loved ones, Bedlingtons are mainly interested in being the center of attention within their own family. He always wants to put on a show for his folks and be the center of attention. When he sees another dog of the same sex, he may get hostile. As a terrier, he tends to pursue tiny, fussy creatures and always digs holes. Positive temperamental puppies are friendly and outgoing, eager to explore their surroundings and interact with humans. The Bedlington isn't an exception. A dog's temperament may be influenced by many things, including its upbringing, experiences, and genetics. During adoption, we advise that you pick a dog who isn't the bully or the shy one. To get a sense of what a puppy will be like as an adult, it's also good to meet at least one parent, preferably the mother, to ensure you get along well and that the puppy has a pleasant disposition. Here's the perfect match if you're searching for a non-shedding, high-energy, and dependable canine companion. Socialization 
Your ability to raise a well-rounded canine companion largely depends on how well socialized your Bedlington puppy is as a young dog. Like any other dog, a young Bedlington benefits significantly from early socialization or exposure to a wide variety of people, places, things, and activities. For its bravery and vigor, the small powerhouse is a common metaphor for this animal. Without adequate mental and physical activity, they might become anxious and tense. Enroll him in a puppy kindergarten to get him off to a good start, as well as bringing him on frequent outings to dog-friendly establishments and social gatherings like parks and shopping. A Bedlington may endure rough treatment up to a point, but he'll draw the line at excessive force. For this and more, his ideal family would include teenagers or adults. However, it's never okay to leave a dog alone with a kid. When interacting with dogs, monitor small children to ensure no biting or ear or tail tugging occurs on either side. Teach your child that he or she should never disturb a dog when he or she is resting or eating, and th this includes not just touching the dog but also trying to take away the food. This breed is well socialized with cats and other home pets at a young age. They get along well with most other dogs. Still, you should keep them away from any dominant canine since, despite their sweet demeanor, they're terrible fighters if provoked. Grooming The coat of the Bedlington Terrier loses relatively little hair all year round. As such, people with allergies might benefit from owning a dog of this breed. It requires weekly brushing and or combing. As a part of the grooming process, it needs to be clipped every six weeks by a professional using specific equipment. Thus, learning how to do it yourself is highly recommended. While at it, ensure that your dog's ears are shaved tightly, but a tassel should be left at the end. Also, the hair is styled to be slightly longer on the legs. Even while the skin won't dry up as quickly as it would with many other breeds after a regular bath, you shouldn't bathe your dog too regularly or his coat will become limp and unsightly. Regular nail trimming is essential for the comfort and safety of your Bedlington as long nails may be painful and make it difficult for the dog to walk or run. A Bedlington's ears should be examined regularly and its teeth should be washed once a day just like they should be for any breed. Exercise a Bedlington's health and happiness depend on regular exercise, yet he only requires a modest amount of exertion due to his average energy level. Similar to other types of terriers, Bedlington's need to get enough exercise to maintain a healthy weight and level of happiness. His hunting skills include pointing, retrieving, tracking, and going to ground after den creatures. However, he's seldom utilized in the wild. A Bedlington may get its exercise from a brisk stroll or a rousing game of fetch. You may take him jogging or hiking with you. His demeanor at home is peaceful, and he's content to sit quietly on the couch next to you after a good game of fetch or a long run. This breed should only be let to run free in a secure environment. Always remember that your dog is a terrier. Therefore, they need to be contained in a yard with fencing and walked on a leash at all times. Generally, avoid small dog syndrome and separation anxiety by always becoming your dog's firm, confident, the consistent pack leader. Training the Bedlington Terrier is brilliant, but only relatively simple to teach because of his intellect. You'll have the most success with him if you can convince him that what you want is really his idea or in his best interest. These dogs are lightning swift on their feet and must be trained to return to their masters when called. When a Bedlington barking gets excessive, it's essential to let it know it's not welcome. It's kind with kids and chatty with strangers. Still, if it believes its owners are weak or inactive, it may become rebellious and defiant. Encourage good behavior using methods like these and play and food incentives. In the right hands, the Bedlington may become a loving member of the family and a willing participant in any and all family activities. His wit and will to enjoy life to the fullest will win you over. Physical punishment and other forms of severe training are ineffective with Bedlingtons. They can result in a struggle of wills rather than submission. The use of Praise and edible prizes, for example, are examples of the kind of positive reinforcement that is much more effective. Forcing your will on a dog of this breed will just bring out his obstinate side and start a fight you're likely to lose. Diet and Nutrition 
Your Bedlington Terrier should be fed premium dog food, store-bought or homemade, under your vet's watchful eye for optimal health. Please keep in mind that the amount of food your adult dog needs will vary depending on age, size, build, metabolism, and level of exercise. Suppose you want your Bedlington to stay in excellent form. In that case, you should feed him twice a day using measured portions instead of putting food available all the time. Like humans, dogs are unique in their nutritional requirements. It's nearly a given that an energetic dog will need more food than a less active dog. Find out which common human meals may be fed to your dog and which should be avoided. If you are worried about your dog's nutrition or weight, it's best to see your doctor. Your dog may be one of the many breeds that quickly gain weight, so keep an eye on his or her calorie intake and overall body mass. Training treats may be helpful, but excessive doling out might lead to weight gain. Lastly, always ensure that clean, fresh water is available for your dog. Health like many dog breeds, Bedlington Terriers are susceptible to a few specific diseases. Breeders who care about the health of the Bedlington's next generation will check for things like hip and elbow dysplasia, hypothyroidism, von Willebrand's disease, a blood problem, thrombopathia, and specific eye disorders in their breeding stock. Being aware of these illnesses is vital if you're contemplating a Bedlington as a breed. However, not all Bedlingtons are susceptible to them. Find a reputable breeder willing to provide you with health documentation for both parents if you want to purchase a puppy. An official health clearance attests that a canine has passed a required diagnostic exam. What are your thoughts concerning this breed? Let us know in the comments section. Consider becoming a member of the channel by clicking the join button to get early access to our upcoming videos plus other membership perks. Also, check out our playlists and click on the video links that pop up at the end of this video. Thank you for watching.